The sun keeps on coming through the office windows, glares me right in the eyes, and makes this overexposed. This is better for me, but not for you. I knew I would get some emails from the video earlier this week, now where this fancy Ultimaker 3D printer is in the shot. So, this video, we're gonna take apart right from scratch, model it up inside of Fusion 360, and send it to the printer. Let's go. Hi everybody, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Maybe overexposed or not, depending on the sun. What can I do? Um, in this video, we are going to model up a uh, Echo Dot a wall mount holder that I decided to create for one of these I have in my kitchen. So it kind of like fits in there and you can mount it right to the wall. Inside of Fusion, it looks like this. So we're gonna model this up. The red portion is actually what kind of matters. And then we're gonna send it to the 3D printer. So let's start out with a clean slate here. Exit out of this. So we're going kind of like the same pattern as we did in the last video. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna create a new component because I actually wanna create um, kind of like a dummy part that resembles uh, the echo device and then model around that. That sometimes can make, can, can make things easier. So with this component created, I'm gonna select the new sketch and I'm gonna select the front plane, but it's kind of like where the wall type where it's gonna be mounted on. C for circle, and I measured that uh, echo to be about 83.5 millimeters in diameter. And uh, I'm gonna hit Q for press pull, and it's about 32 millimeters thick. You make your own measurements for whatever you kinda like are looking for. Then, with that, that's kinda like that portion is done. That's our assembled part. Now I'm gonna go up and create what actually gonna be the part we're gonna print. So I'm gonna right click, say new component and slow left click and I'm gonna call this one probably echo wall mount. That's the best name I can come up with. <laughs> and then I'm gonna open up a sketch, it's kinda like on the back side where we were with, uh, um, with that other part. And uh, I'm gonna hit P for project um, to borrow the edge from the echo kind of dummy part we created. And then if I hit O for offset, I, uh, I can add a little bit of offset here because I want to have some kind of like some, some thickness and I'm going to make three and a half millimeters just because that kind of like looked good to me as, as a thickness on the part. Now I'm actually going to kind of like roll around so we can kind of look at this from, from the front here. Um, so now I, I don't want to make the shell all the way around. So I'm actually going to hit L for line and I'm going to draw myself a couple of helping lines. I'm going to draw a line um, kind of like from from this area to here and down to about there. And then I'm gonna create a line from the midpoint here and I'm gonna make sure that it snaps to our outer circle, D for dimension, and uh, make that dimension there. And I decided mine should be 20, 20 degrees. That's not really uh, that important. Then, because I created this vertical line, I could go over here and say, let's uh, mirror this line across this line so now we get the, the second line there so now we kind of like have this v groove here um the only reason i mirror it is just so now there's only one dimension right so if i change this to decide i want to make it design change to 30 the other one will update you could draw them individually and offset them individually with this done i am now going to hit q for press pull again now this time though i'm just going to make sure that i'm only selecting that lower portion there and kind of draw that out uh, like this. And you can kind of see the shadow of the echo device. Now I wanted to go a little bit further than this because I want to add a little bit of material here too. But I don't really necessarily remember where. So what I'm going to do is instead of dragging out here, I'm actually going to go over to the menu and go to object. And then I'm going to select the front face of our dummy echo. Now you see it's flush. And now I can actually add a material thickness, what is that three and a half that I created before? Hit enter, and uh, and you now kind of like have that curve that is gonna sit in there. If I go up and click on the assembly file, we can kind of see the two um, sitting next to each other. So we kind of like have a, a shelf for it um, to, a shelf to, to sit on. Next, I'm gonna go back into the wall mount. Um, I am actually going to to open another sketch on the front of that face where it goes a little bit beyond our echo. 
And uh, I'm gonna do another offset and select that inner. If I select, you see chain select, it will select the whole thing, right? Um, but if I uncheck chain select here, then it will only select this edge here. And I can bring that in. I'm gonna bring that in the same three and a half um, right here. And then just alpha line, I'm gonna close this portion off like that. And as soon as I do that, you'll see we get a kind of like that uh, chain uh, profile, shows the profile there. I'm gonna hit Q for press pull and, uh, and go in here. And now I can drag this shelf in. Now we've talked about before about tolerances and all this stuff when it comes to 3D printing. And this really comes down to um, how much do we want this echo to wobble around in here? How good are your measurements and things like that? I'm pretty confident. So three and a half is what uh, there is into the pots. So I'm actually gonna go uh, minus 3.2. So I'm leaving about a point three of a millimeter clearance. That's gonna be a little tight, but I, I, I think I'm gonna be all right. So I'm gonna hit okay to that. And then now I kind of have that there. Now if we go back and up to to uh, the main one, um, it's kind of see, hard to see because everything is gray and gray. So I'm actually gonna just right click and uh, hit appearances. And if we find all the way up on top, we should have paint and glossy paint. I'm just gonna take a black and draw that on, on our echo device so we can kind of start seeing the differences. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a shelf and if we zoom in, there is a little bit of clearance in that. All right, we're almost there. Now I'm gonna go back to the back side here and, uh, and I'm actually gonna open another, um, another sketch on the back. So I'm gonna select this back face. This is gonna be kind of the one that's gonna to touch the wall. And uh, in this sketch, I'm actually gonna hit uh, the P for project again. And uh, we can go ahead and we can select um, this edge here, this edge, this edge. And then we can select the whole of, uh, of the whole echo part two. Hit okay and hit Q. And uh, then we can extrude out from here um, that kind of like the wall thickness that we're gonna add um, to to this. We are almost done, but um, don't forget that there's gonna be some wires that's gonna connect uh, <laughs> to the back of this echo. So we probably need to get that in, uh, in our model too. So for this, I'm gonna show you a little trick um, that if I hide that echo, I wanna create a square uh, in here, a rectangle down here for the wires to come in and out. Um, but if you're fairly new to Fusion, you might be like, well, wait a minute, um, I can't sketch on a curved face. So when I go ahead and create a sketch, I'm actually gonna draw on this plane right here. Remember, you don't have to sketch on this on the surface you're actually gonna be cutting through or modeling on. You can, you can do that on these planes. I'm just gonna select that top plane, and uh, then I'm gonna draw a, uh, a rectangle here. So I'm just gonna, in here, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. And uh, the width of this one's gonna be 14. It's gonna be tab there, and I'm gonna make it 30, 30 long, and hit okay, and place that. Now it's blue because it's actually kind of like floating around here. So what I actually need to do is I need to tie that down. The way I'm gonna do that when I measure it with my calibers, where I'm gonna create a helping line, just like we did before, from the midpoint of this to the midpoint of that. And um, if I turn my echo back on, D for dimension, I can actually pick up the edge of the echo, which is kind of cool, and, uh, and place that back to that line in here. And that was supposed to be 18, like that. Let me hide the echo again. So now we have that dimension. See how it projected a line from that, which is super cool. And then I actually also need uh, it to be placed in the center. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hit an L for another line and just draw. This line could actually go, doesn't have to have a link down in there. Um, just go past. And then I can use the symmetry and select I want this point to, to uh, this point to this line and that will make it symmetri symmetrical. But what I wanna point out is that that sketch is now sitting up here, right? 
But it's okay because when I hit Q for press pull, I select the squares here. I can now just cut straight through there. And I like to do distance through all. So no matter how thick I make things, that cut will always go through. So that is for uh, for our our cut through there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount this to the wall. Um, so we're going to add a couple of screw holes here. Now I'm going to have two screw holes. I want to use the the hold command that I used in my previous uh, video. But if I got to use the hold command and I got to have multiple holes, then I'm actually going to have a sketch. So I'm going to create the sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to select that face here. And uh, I actually know that I kind of decided if I hit L for line from here to here that I'm going to have C for circle. I'm going to have a hole somewhere over here. And uh, I'm going to make that D. I'm going to make that. This doesn't really matter. I'm going to throw this in, but 10. And uh, if I just make that maybe just midpoint of this line, maybe that would work. Make that 16. Like that. And then, oh, 16. So I'm going to drag this. Snap that in there. And uh, now I could do what I did before with a mirror command. Select this hole here and flick that around there. And I could just do a normal cut through, but I actually want a counter bar for the screw to sit within. So I'm going to go back to our hole. And uh, now I'm going to select them from sketch. And I'm going to select our two points. I am going to say that they are going to be cutting all the way through. But they got to be a counter bore. And when I do that, I get these extra extra dimensions in here. So now I can actually go in and uh, adjust things. So this diameter here is actually not going to be 10. This here is going to be, I think they are three and a half. Let's make these five. Let's make this diameter 10. And uh, I think I mentioned about three and a half. Heads right there. Hit OK. And now we have these counter bores here. Last two things I'm going to do to this part before we send it to the printer. One, I want to add a fillet on this side here. So I'm going to hit F for fillet. And I'm going to select this edge. And I'm going to select this edge over here. And then I'm going to draw a fillet. Now, you see how it? you can control how thick you want it here. I'm actually going to make sure that it goes past um, that I don't want that little edge right there I want to pass that so four is probably good so it gets a good clean edge right there and then I'm going to do another trick that hopefully works I'm going to do another fillet F a fillet and uh, I'm actually going to select the whole thing and when you do that you will see that it will it will start adding fillets everywhere this is a faster way than selecting every edge Select everything by window it, and then you could just go back and you can just unselect the edges where we don't want any fillets like this. And I probably don't want to fill it either in there and in there. And I might, you might get some errors if it, if the filler gets too big or if it just can't solve, but let's try it one millimeter. And of course, one millimeter, you can see, you will get an arrow if it didn't work. If there was some sharp intersections, uh, something like that. But that, my friend, is uh, what we're going to model up. And now the exciting thing is that we're going to go ahead and print it. From this point inside of Fusion, I'm going to go to the Make and go to 3D Print button. Now, there's a couple of things i got to show you. Let's start from the top and work our way down. So the first thing is you get to select what you want in here. You can select the preview met. So I'm going to select our model. And you will see that we get a preview. Now, it shows up here how many triangles it creates. And that is, of course, how fine uh, Fusion is going to turn this into an STL. You get three, four different options in here. High, medium, low, custom. I normally just go medium standard for what I'm printing. There is some refinements options in here if you want to. But generally, I would think that, that that medium is fine. Now, down here, you have a couple of choices. If you you can uncheck 
uh, send to printer utility. And then if you hit save right now, it's just gonna save it out as an STL file. That you then, that STL file, if I, if I hit okay, You'll see it comes up and save this as an STL file. You can save this wherever you kind of want to, put it on a thumb drive and then get it to your 3D printer or opening it up in the 3D printer slicing software and then and then print it. Now I'm gonna go back again and do it one more time. It's like this one again. What I'm gonna do is I am gonna send it to a print utility. What that means is that you can actually in here, you will see that, that Fusion already have a couple of Autodesk um, kind of print slices built into it. So Mass Mix or Print Studio. Um, I am using the Ultramakers Cura, but it's actually free for download, but it's absolutely awesome. The way you get Cura in here is by clicking Customize and then select Application Folder, and then you just gotta navigate to the execution of that EXE file for whatever printer utility you use for your printer. This will be different for every single printer. But in our case here, we're gonna select Cura and we're gonna hit OK. When we do that, Cura is now gonna open up on our screen and you will see our part is gonna appear on the, the print utility here. Now, this is not anything to do with Fusion per se. Uh, we just executed right in from Fusion and got it right into the Cura software that I'm using for the Ultimaker. Like again, whatever you're using, uh, that 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 depends, right? Uh, so in here you have different you have different settings again depending on what you are looking for. I decided to go with a layer height of 0.1. Now, some people know that 3D printing is not my strongest suit. That some people know a lot more than I do. But I set it to 0.1. It was not the finest. It was not the coarsest. Of course, when you hit the the prepare to slice, then that will give you a time estimate. So leaving this at, uh, at point 0.1 would leave this at 10 uh, hours to do it in this black tough PLA with these settings. Decide to, you know, whatever you want to do, it's different options in here. Read your, you know, depends on your 3D printer. From here, you can save it to a file that you can put on a thumb drive and bring over to the Ultimaker. Of course, the one I have is uh, is pretty cool. Turn the 3D printing on. The sun is still coming through, huh? Click connect. And send it directly print over network. See, it's sending the data to the printer. Data have been sent. That, friends, that will do it uh, for this video here. This thing's gonna start making some noise for uh, for some time and uh, get a cool little device. I hope you found this helpful. As always, I truly appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. You will find my email address down in the description of this video, lars.christensenartofthis.com. Really appreciate you taking the time. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, it's all right. Thumbs down and until the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks.